Hello, amazing Nathan. So today we're starting a new project in art. We are looking at the famous artist Claude Monet. He's really famous for his impressionist paintings like Water Lilies, the Japanese Bridges, and his Haystack series. And I will put a couple pictures of Monet attached to this lesson so you can kind of get a little bit of the small art history lesson we did on Monet in class today. There might even be a little video to watch so you can learn a little bit about Monet. Um, and then we're gonna start on our project. We are taking inspiration from Monet's Japanese bridges. He did a lot of series of paintings of these gorgeous bridges over green landscapes, water lilies, and the reflections of the water and how the trees in the background reflected in the water. It's a lot of detail. So we're gonna really use Monet to help us talk about space. Remember that foreground, middle ground, background, how things can get smaller if they go back into space and how we're going to use them for a value and value is the lightness and darkness of a color to create that illusion of depth and space so we're going to use values of color to give us highlights and shadows so a lot's going to go on and this might take us a couple weeks to work on so i'm going to give you monday and tuesday's assignment in one week lesson so what i post today is due tuesday and friday's lessons and i'll be due that monday like last week. So when we look at his Monet's or Monet's Japanese bridges, the main focus of each work is this curved arc kind of bridge. And it's a really simple bridge. We're not gonna go really fancy. So we're working on nine by twelve paper, so just your plain white paper, any kind of white construction paper work, we will be painting on this because we're gonna do a resist too. So you don't want really thin copy paper, you want a thicker piece of drawing paper or construction paper if you have it. So for today, you'll need your paper, a pencil with an eraser, your oil pastels, and if you don't have oil pastels, some crayons. You should have your oil pastels from earlier, but just in case, um, have either oil pastels or crayons. We might use both in class, I'm not real sure yet. So we're gonna start by creating that bridge. And because the bridge is our main focus, it's in the foreground. So it's the thing that's the closest to us, the most in focus, and the largest and clearest. And the bridge is just a really simple arch. So think of like a rainbow line. A long time ago, I taught you guys how to draw with your eraser. So sometimes if we draw with our eraser comes first, we know exactly what it looks like before we put it down on our paper and have to erase. So with your eraser, kind of get that first arc. You don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. So you gotta find that perfect medium. And I know you can't see my eraser crumbles probably, but I just kind of use my eraser to give me a guideline and I'm happy with how that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead with my pencil and trace over my arch. Now it's a little wobbly and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We don't want it to be really high. We want kind of like a wide, almost a sad face. Right? So now we need to draw a second arch or rainbow line that mimics this first one, but we want to give it some space, some depth. So I'm going to use my pencil and I want it to be almost like a hands width apart. So I'm going to kind of measure out maybe the center is going to be about a hand width down and I know I need a curve following the same curve. So again, this is where your pencil eraser or any kind of eraser crumb really comes in handy. So we want to kind of follow the curve we've already made and then once we're happy with it trace over with our pencil okay so I'm gonna change my brightness there you go so you just have what looks like now almost like a rainbow right so his bridges had very clear defined um, slats or I don't know what they're called in a bridge vertical line. So we're going to go through and we're going to start in the center and we're going to draw a vertical line. And we want them to kind of go straight down. So follow your thing. And I'm just going to make a couple more. So I'm kind of chunking things up into thirds. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is a bridge that we just kind of found in time. So I'm bringing straight lines down. So now it looks like weird teeth, right? So we need to thicken our lines. We're gonna do this by once again drawing another line going above our first one 
following that curve and I like to change and move my paper. All right, it's about a finger's width. I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. We don't want this too thick because we wanna have plenty of room for our water lilies and our reflection. We don't want it too thin either because we want to be able to play with shadows and highlights. Okay, so now we need the same thing with our vertical line. So I'm going to decide how thick I want them and I'm going to draw a line next to the line. And if you pull your arm straight down, it's usually easier to keep your line straight. All right. So now I created our bridge. That's step one, right? We want it to have a look like our water is flowing underneath our bridge, like it's crossing over and we're kind of looking from the bottom up to the bridge. So we're not gonna see a lot of perspective. We're not doing a lot of work on that. We're just kind of giving that illusion there's water underneath it. So the things at the bottom, the water lilies at the bottom that are close to us are gonna be the biggest. Then the ones in the middle ground will be a little smaller, and the ones in the background will be the smallest. So we're going back to our landscapes. So we want to add some water lilies to the front, and these are going to be your biggest ones. And lily pads and water lilies are pretty simple. Just kind of make some sort of squished oval shape, and that's your lily pad. Sometimes they like to cluster, so you can put a whole bunch together or just two. You can have a couple Remember, they'll get smaller as they go back and they'll get bigger as they come forward. So just watch your perspective. So my bigger and they get a little bit smaller. So I want to put one here, but it needs to be smaller than these two. So maybe I'm just going to have a couple little ones of mine kind of look like hot dog buns and yours can be round. It's up to you how you want to do that. So I kind of like this composition. So then I want to have some lily pads kind of coming through the bridge. Like if I was looking through the bridge, maybe there's a couple lily pads. So this is my middle ground. So I might add one up here. And I like to do them in pairs. You can do them in threes even, or singles. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller than this. And I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle. We don't want them too small yet because then it gets hard to color them and we have to get smaller. So again, you decide, and maybe this little pad's kind of going behind it, I'm tucking it behind. I maybe want one over here, maybe tucked behind, I kind of liked how that looked. All right, so I've done the lily pads here. Then I'm gonna scoot to my background, so these will be the smallest lily pads. So again, they can probably be about the same size here as your middle ground but as you go back, they need to get smaller. We don't wanna go teeny tiny because we have to color these and we don't want them to be hard to color. Maybe I'm gonna add a, a little cluster over here of like four. I need something down here. So just watch your perspective in your sizing. All right, so once you're happy and you've kind of sprinkled lily pads all over, your composition looks good. I think I need something right here. So I'm gonna make my smallest one yet towards the top. And that's exactly how it should be. And you decide if you want little groups of three, or maybe you just have like one hanging out, maybe I have something coming off the top. All right, so my shapes got smaller as they went back into space. So now I'm gonna add my water lilies. And water lilies kind of look like a tulip. They're just like that U shape with some zigzag on top. And that's as simple as it needs to be. So again, things down in the foreground, are your nice, your biggest flower. So I'm just making a U shape and I'm gonna add kind of a zigzag and you can get, it's, this is the most detailed because of the foreground. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So I just made a U shape and a zigzag and some points underneath it. And maybe I want two water lilies on this pad because I want another really big one. So this one I can see a lot of detail in because and maybe I want to add another pad. I think this one's kind of floating on the pad. So we can always add more lily pads. And not every lily pad needs a water lily. It's up to you. Some don't have to have any, and you can add them. Just watch your sizing. So I'm going a little bit smaller. So I'm going in the background, and I can still add my detail. Maybe I want the lily pad here, or the water lily. 
We're just going to keep them kind of simple. So they're getting smaller as they go back. I might, I think I'm going to skip having a water lily over here, but I like the idea of having a water lily over here. So as they go back, I'm only going to do that one layer, but that's my choice as the artist. Just keep adding your water lilies, watching your sizing. It's okay that the water lilies are bigger than the lily pad. They wouldn't cross into your bridge. But as we go back, remember things get smaller and less detailed. So when you're way back here, it might just be a U shape. And maybe this one has a couple that go off. Maybe this one has a couple U's. Maybe this one has three. And you can just kind of cap it off there. This one's still big enough. I can add the zigzag. It's just one of those choices you're going to have to make as the artist. How detailed you want. But the main thing I'm looking for, let me zoom back out, is that you did your bridge, and you created your water lays, and everything's getting smaller as it goes back. This is day one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. Day one is I expect we're gonna draw it all and kind of sketch it all in and make sure our perspective and our spacing is right. So it should look like things are going smaller as they go back into space, less detailed and less clear. After you've done your first sketch, you might decide, well, maybe I want another water lily here or maybe I want something kind of poking off the side here to really be up close. So kind of play with your composition and look for balance. Make sure everything has something. And this is day one. And you don't have to take a picture of day one because I'm gonna continue with day two in the next video and both day one and day two are due together. All right, so if you want me to see this, go ahead and post a picture and I can okay it before you start coloring. Um, actually, let's do that. Erase what I just said. When you finish with day one, go ahead and turn it in, and I'm gonna separate these assignments. This is day one, I wanna see this, so I wanna make sure this is great before we start coloring. Day two, I will post on Friday, um, but day two will be due on Monday, so you'll have Friday um, and little and all day Monday to work on it. Um, that's how I'll do it. So, read the directions, and turn day one in to the day one assignment on Tuesday. I will go ahead and post day two on Tuesday, so if you want to start early, you can, but don't turn it in under day one. If you have any questions, because that was kind of confusing, let me know, and I'll talk to you later. Bye, Nathan.